What's up, Sass Brothers? You girls, Sassy J, and welcome back to my channel. Welcome back, guys. So, it is time for um, episode seven review of Love is Blind UK. And, guys, I'm not gonna lie to you, I wanted to do the video last night, but I gotta be honest, my heart is not into Love is Blind UK. I feel like I don't really, I'm not getting that fulfillment of reviewing it. You know how you watch Love Island and you don't know what's going to come next, you're anticipating, right? For me, I like that. I like that feeling of being on the edge and, and sharing that feeling with other people, especially with my subscribers. But because I know that you are able to binge watch on Netflix, um, I personally, to be honest, I personally only watch one episode at a time. So I watch the episode, then I review it to kind of keep my myself kind of like away from knowing what's going to come next. But because I know... If I wasn't reviewing, I would have been binge watching. For me, I'm thinking everyone else might be binge watching because it's not easy to cut yourself off when you want to know, especially when you're left on a cliffhanger, you know, to not go and watch the following episode. So because of that, I just feel like, mm, I don't know. I don't know if I'm enjoying um, reviewing this. Actually, I think I'm not enjoying reviewing it, but I'm going to do it for you guys. So I'm not going to lie. You're the... the the handful of people who said to me, yes, they're going to watch Love is Blind UK is the reason why and the sole reason why I'm doing this review. I'm not going to lie to you guys. But yes, because you guys say you're going to do it, I'm going to try and do it, okay? But anyways, before I get into the video, I'm going to ask you guys to give the video a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. Please subscribe. So guys, I'm not going to lie, Catherine annoyed me a whole lot in episode seven because to me she's saying that she didn't bring over the whole thing with the cheating or whatever from the previous um day or from the retreat or whatever but she obviously did she was holding on to things and remember i said in my last um review i feel like she's one of them people that don't know when to let things go i feel like that was proven in episode seven because she just was just creating an issue for no reason and freddie was really trying to kind of break that tension by bringing a little joke and, and fun and all that kind of stuff into the mix. And she was just acting like like a B-I-T-C-H for no reason. I just don't really get it. Like, grumpy for no reason. Like, come on, man. And I felt sorry for um, Freddie because he's saying that maybe he should tone down who he is, you know, and his personality because maybe he's too much for Catherine. You should never, ever, ever have to turn down or even try to be something that you're not to please somebody else. Listen, if somebody cannot accept you for you, they need to go because that person is not yours, right? They have a saying in Jamaica that every tick of the whore bush, no, that's not how it goes. Every hoe has its, I'm not saying whore as in, you know, every hoe has its tick a bush. That's what, <laughs> that's what they say, which means at the end of the day, everybody has somebody for them out there. So you don't need to change who you are to please somebody else, to get somebody else to love you and appreciate you. So for me, I was really, really annoyed about that. But Freddie's house, I'm not going to lie, Freddie always look nice. It look nice, it look nice, it look nice. Big, nice O's. But for me, listen, I feel like Catherine genuinely likes Freddie. It's given. I feel like he's handsome. What's there not to like? And obviously, you can see that she likes him. But for me, what I'm worried about, the more Freddie shows how much he likes Catherine, I feel like Catherine is getting more of the upper hand to act out. This is my opinion. Comment down below. Let me know what you think. Because she was telling Freddie that she felt like maybe she wasn't good enough for him. Or, do you know what I mean? She has those insecurities. Now, Freddie reassured her. And I feel like the more Freddie shows how much he likes her and how much he wants her i feel like automatically it's like she's just thinking well he wants me and you can see where she's acting a bit different you know what i mean but he showed her his house and i don't know i for me red flags i saw some red flags on Catherine today because i'm just like she was snapping all day and then she saw the house I mean, obviously, I know she likes him, so I don't think she's just there for the, just the money or whatever. But you know somebody can like you, genuinely like you, but then they realise you have money, and then the greed part of them kicks in. So it's like the like that they genuinely have for you, it's there, but the the want or the need for what you have, like your money and all that kind of stuff, kind of overtakes the like that they have for you that was genuine. I feel like this is what's going to happen in the case of Catherine and, um, and Freddie. Because... For me, like, Freddie didn't do anything wrong in that situation. You should be able to joke and laugh to your partner. From the conversations I've seen them have, it's not like... If if it was a case of Freddie was always making a joke 
when she tried to have serious when she tried to have like serious conversations with him i would have been like okay i get it but you've seen him have serious conversation deep conversations light-hearted conversations all different type of conversations so for me i wouldn't have seen him as a person that's trying to make a joke about everything and he himself said that he's not even been doing that but for some reason you know Catherine was just acting out but when she saw the house all of a sudden she's gonna say that she respects him now after seeing the house because she knows that he works hard and all that kind of stuff you don't need to see some of these assets and the stuff that they have you don't need to know what they do as a job title you don't need to see anything that they've achieved to respect them at the end of the day you were talking you're trying to say to me all that time you never respected the man for me, it's a red flag. I feel like she just, she definitely likes him, but I feel like now that she's seen what he has, his house and all this kind of stuff, I feel like her eyes are going glittery and now she kind of wants a piece of that. So it's like she's telling herself, okay, well, you know what? I found myself a good one. I've bagged myself a good one. He's got money. He's handsome. It's all that kind of stuff. Yes, this is what I see with Catherine right now. I might be just overjudging, but for me, that's what my intuition is telling me and I'm going with it. Comment down below, let me know what you think. And obviously she met um, Freddie's family and um, Freddie's mom, sister and his brother. I love the relationship that he has with his family. And you know, it was so sweet when he asked his brother to be um, his best man. He couldn't really fully understand it and they were aware of that. But it's just the fact that of how much his brother means to him. I just feel like that was such a sweet moment. Now where we see where um, Freddie and his sister had a chat and Freddie's sister is saying, like, obviously, the reason why she wanted to talk to him separately is because she noticed that he's not being himself. He's more reserved compared to how they know him. And I feel like that's because he's trying to kind of tone himself down to please Catherine. And you see, when you're close to people and people know you, they're aware of these things and they pick up on these things. And his sister picked up on that. Now, he was saying, saying to his sister, like, obviously, I really like Catherine, but, you know, there was there's still things that I need to really think about because you know we're so different right we're so different and you know we have to get used to being around each other and the difference with each other and, and try to make it work and he told his sister that he felt like you know Catherine thought he joked about too much or he played about too much and that sometimes um aggravated her or annoyed her now the comment that Catherine made when they were all sitting down she was like yeah he plays he always jokes about he jokes about da 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 you could just tell i mean there could be nerves with um freddie but i feel like if you're somebody that knows freddie you would know that something was off and you could see it in his body language and his sister picked up on it that obviously she, you know something wasn't fully right there now i feel like they have all um the right reasons to feel you know a bit of doubt about the situation because at the end of the day you're marrying a stranger you're marrying somebody you've only been you only known for like a few weeks so it's a big deal freddie looked like he's got some money him and his family look like they got a bit of money i'm not gonna lie freddie is so cute bloody hell man freddie looked like he's got a bit of money and for me when you have something right you have to be careful because you don't know and naturally people will try to take from you when you don't have nothing people will try to rip anything away from you even when you don't have nothing so when they know you have something you have to be even more careful. For me, I hope that if Freddie does decide to marry Catherine, he gets a prenup because at the end of the day, I don't trust Catherine, okay? But anyways, let's move on from Catherine and Freddie. Let's talk about Demi and Ollie for a little bit. I love Demi and Ollie at this moment. See, this is why I say sometimes we have to realize, we have to put ourselves in somebody else's shoes and realize that people deal with situations differently because seeing Demi and Ollie together, you could tell they're so sweet together. They look compatible as a couple and um, Ollie met um, some of Demi's friend, close friends and they like him, they approve of him. And for me, to be honest with you, you can see just the banter. You can see that they're able to communicate better now than they did at the start because, you know, they were having a conversation. And what I love about um, Demi, Demi pays attention. She picks up on certain things about Ollie, and I think he he's feeling more and more kind of 
and eased or relaxed around her because now obviously she was saying to him like I've noticed certain things about you and he basically kind of like spoke to her and said to her you know it's interesting that you notice these things because I do have ADHD now this explains quite a lot of things right and it, it explains how you know overwhelmed he felt in that situation in a group situation because people don't understand ADHD can kind of transform itself in many different ways right so it kind of makes sense with him and that's why I say sometimes we have to put ourselves in other people's shoes and realize that even if he didn't have ADHD right this is a big deal this is a big deal I know I have been and I'm gonna tell you this I have been in a relationship before and I have loved that person and every single thing and he proposed to me and I was scared as hell I was scared as hell now as you can tell, I'm not married, so <laughs> I wasn't ready, y'all. I was not ready, but it didn't mean that I didn't love him. I, I I regret it sometimes when I look back at it and I'm thinking to myself, I wish I'd said yes because my life would have been so much different because I loved him with everything in me. But I was scared because marriage is a big thing. I was scared. Scared. So imagine that's me loving somebody, being with somebody for a good amount of time and know how I feel about that person. But yes, I couldn't bring myself to go down that road because I wasn't ready. It's not that I didn't love that, that person. I loved them with all my heart, but I wasn't ready for marriage because for me, I was like, oh my God, the first thing I was thinking, oh my God, I'm going to be married. He's going to expect me to do this. I'm going to have to you know, I wasn't ready for kids even. I'm like, oh my God, they're going to marriage, kids, all these things. Oh my God, what I'm, I'm going to have to change my life. I'm going to have to do this. I'm going to have to do that. All these things came in my head. And I was young because this was, this was a long time ago. This was probably, I was like about 23, 23, 24, 23, 22, 23, I think I was. So I was quite young. I'm 37 tomorrow. Oh my God, it's my birthday tomorrow. Uh, it's my birthday tomorrow, y'all. It's my birthday tomorrow. It's my birthday tomorrow. But anyways. <laughs> and I'm 37 tomorrow guys so you know it's a big deal so we need to understand that what we're seeing with these couples they're making a massive decision so not everybody can 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 process it the way that you see other people the other couples do, do you know what I'm saying so give them a break that's what I'm gonna say I like Ollie and Demi and for me in episode seven it made it more clearer that they actually do they look good together and they are compatible and i i love them i just think they just needed the time and they needed time for themselves as well and like i said the group situation can make things more overwhelming for people so i think that's what was happening there but anyways let's move on so we see benaya benaya and nicole and um benaya met nicole's family she said she was a bit concerned that her family might, her parents might not trust her judgment because obviously she made that decision to marry before and he ended up in the divorce but to be honest with you it was good to see that they were more accepting and very supportive you could tell they were shocked because she didn't actually tell them that they were going to get married until when we saw it but um they were surprised they were surprised you could tell the dad's face but they were also very supportive and that just shows that you know when you love your kids you know even when you don't agree necessarily you don't agree with the stuff that their their decisions what they want to do you just support them because at the end of the day that's our job we can voice our concerns but you show the support and if it goes wrong at the end of the day you you just be there that's all you can do um maria and um tom Maria and Tom, um, Tom met Maria's family and they were very sweet with him. Um, it was nice to hear Maria's mom saying, you know, my son in my son to be. I think that was quite cute because that shows from the early bit that she was accepting of him. Um, obviously, you could tell that the sister is more kind of like the, I think she's more, she's the older, eldest one, I, I'm guessing. You could tell where she's more mature and she had more of a, a kind of like a say in the, the whole situation. And she was kind of like that head figure to kind of like pull Tom aside to see where what his intentions were with Maria. And I think we she needed that because the fa her father is not around and you kind of need somebody to make sure, you know, you you have that good talk with that person, especially with Tom. Like I didn't like his comment about the whole work thing. But at the end of the day, you know, nobody's perfect. And, you know, they did make a little joke about it because even when her sister, ironically, her um, Maria's sister said, you know, it's not about, it's about love. It's not about what you do or money or whatever. And Maria gave Tom a little look and obviously the sister caught onto it. And she was like, oh, what's that about? And uh, Maria was like, oh no, he was just judgmental. And he was like, you know, she was calling me a judgmental person a couple of days ago. Um, 
Obviously, they didn't go into much details of it, but Maria was like, you know what? He is very, well, he was very judgmental, but now he's with me and he's changed. Tom himself admitted that, listen, you know, I'm a different person from when I started this journey. And I hope that is true because at the end of the day, sometimes we need other people to open our eyes about certain things. But for me, that comment, you know, we're trying to be forgiven here, but at the end of the day, it is a red flag. So I, well, let's call it an orange flag for now, but we'll have to keep an eye on it. Because at the end of the day, that is not, that's a strong opinion. And strong opinions, they don't just go away overnight like that. It just, it just doesn't happen. But, you know, he did ask um, Maria's mom for her blessings and she gave it to him, which is good to see. So at the end of the day, even though they didn't know about the situation and it's a very different, because it's not traditional, is it? It's a very dis different situation. They're accepting and they're very supportive of it. Um, Let's move on to Sabrina and Steven. There comes my lighting again, acting up. I cannot be bothered with it, guys. This is why I don't like recording in the daytime, because when I record in the daytime, my window and where I'm sitting, it goes a bit funny. So this is what I don't like. So I like to do it at night times, but I'm going to have to run through this because I just came back from church. And if I don't do it, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to lie. But anyway, so Sabrina met Stephen's friends and obviously he didn't tell them much about it either. Right. And I can understand what this is not an easiest conversation to have. Like, you know, I'm getting married and I met somebody. It's a blind date kind of situation. It's not the easiest conversation to have, but they had doubts. And obviously you can't really blame them because it's not the traditional way of doing things, is it? And, you know, you hear one of his friends say, listen, it took me five years to propose and two years to get married. So it's a big deal, you know? So for you guys, so for them to just me and him proposing before they even met, it is crazy. Uh, come on now. We, we might get used to it because we're watching it and it's not something you see every day. So it is crazy. But at the same time, you know, they said that they haven't seen him in this way before. They haven't seen him looking so happy and that like, look in his eyes and all that kind of stuff for a while. So they said, you know what? If he's happy, they're happy. So they'll support him regardless. But anyways, guys, so we see in the next episode where Sam comes into the mix and Natasha comes in the mix. So for me, I don't even know because they hear Sam asking, and um, Natasha, did you actually love me? <sighs> really? It wasn't love. It's not love. I don't know why people keep doing this, but it's not love. But anyways, let, let's, let's humor it. But, you know, he goes out of his way to tell Benaya that, you know, when he took um, Nicole back to his house, Nicole went to have sex with him. At the end of the day, it's life. You know, she did say she loves him and all that kind of stuff. So if she was going to do that, he said he said no. I don't know. I see, I hear that one of these people had was in a relationship and right before um, they went into the experiment, they ended their relationship. Now, the person didn't tell me who it was, but I have reason to believe that it's Sam. I'm not going to lie. That's it. But I feel like regardless of whether Sam said I didn't want to have sex with her or not, at the end of the day, you know, he did not need to go and tell Benaya this. This is why I say it's all a fame thing for, for Sam because there was no need to go and say this to, to Benaya because you guys decided it's not going to work and then you're moving on. Let them move on. Do you know what I'm saying? But we'll see that in the next episode, guys. Um, And Natasha comes into the mix and I don't know what Tom is going to be doing right now because it looks like... He's a little bit open, but I don't think Natasha is. I feel like Natasha is done with it. I don't really know, but let's see what happens in um, episode eight because I'm going to try and watch that tonight because it's my birthday tomorrow and I don't know if I really want to be recording anything tomorrow. Uh, it's bad enough I have the doctor's appointment. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? But anyways, guys, that is it. I think I'm going to try going forward, maybe doing two reviews in one, because obviously I think we still have like episode um, eight, nine and ten, maybe. I think I'm not quite sure, but or eight and nine. So I might just start doing them two twos. I don't know, guys, because like I said, I'm only really doing it for you guys. I swear down. Otherwise, if you guys say to me, Sass, you don't even have to do it right now. It's fine. You don't have to do it. We're good. I'm stopping. I swear to God. I swear to God. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Please subscribe. And guys, before you leave, make sure you give the video a thumbs up. But anyways, guys, I'll see y'all in my next video. But for now, keep it sassy-licious.